Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about goal setting and using what we call SMART goals to help us um, achieve what we hope to achieve. Um, this is the first part in our study skills series. Uh, so this week will be about SMART goals and goal setting. Next week we're going to take a look at a study session and what it means to actually sit down and study and learn some new material. All right, so let's talk about goal setting. Um, now, most of us have goals, right? We might have some really big, lofty, exciting goals that we're working on. Um, like, I want to get a new job or own a house or start a family or uh, go to college. Uh, those are big goals. Or we might have some small goals, like I want to clean my house or organize my closet or um, start a vegetable garden or go for a walk today, right? You might have some small goals set out for your day. Um, now, no matter what kinds of goals we're talking about, there are some things that you can do um, to help you achieve those goals. And now I'm by no means an expert on goal setting, um, but I have been a person for a while now um, who's learned a little bit about goals through experience, um, but I've also been someone who's worked as an academic coach and a teacher for a while, so I've um, learned some information about um, what makes goals more likely to be achieved. So a few very key things to start off with here. You're more likely to achieve your goals if you write them down, so just taking it from your head and writing it down um, is a big step towards achieving your goals. Also, if you share them with a few people that you trust, um, could just be one person, could be a few people, it doesn't need to be like shouted to the whole world, um, just sharing it with a few people that you trust who you're gonna um, discuss your goal with and maybe keep them updated on how you're doing. And maybe they will um, hold you accountable for your goal as well. Um, and then the third thing is to make them smart. That's S-M-A-R-T. And that's what we're going to talk about um, in the rest of this video. So what makes a goal smart? S-M-A-R-T. Uh, first thing I want you to do is I want you to think about these two goals that I have written down on the screen. The first goal says, I want to get better at math. The second goal says, I want to score a 150 on my math GED by October 1st, 2020. Now, these are both goals that might be relevant to you if you're watching this video and you're my student. Um, it's very likely that you are working towards earning your GED um, and specifically finishing up that math section of the GED. So I want you to think about these two goals. And I want you to think about how are these goals different? What do you notice about these goals? What do you notice are the differences between these goals? So take a minute to think about that. You can pause the video, um, just write down one or two ideas or list one or two ideas in your head. Okay. So really what makes those two goals different is that one of them is just kind of a regular old goal that's going to be difficult to work towards and achieve. The second goal is a SMART goal. I want to score a 150 on my math GED by October 1st, 2020. That is a SMART goal. So a SMART goal is a technique for writing down and keeping track of goals in a way that makes you more likely to achieve your goals. And that SMART, that S-M-A-R-T, it's an acronym. So it stands for um, words that give more detail about what we're talking about. So the S stands for specific. Is the goal specific, right? So if we go back to those two different goals, the first one, I want to get better at math is very general or vague. It's going to be hard for me to determine whether or not I've actually achieved that goal. Um, whereas I want to score a 150 on my math 
GED by October 1st, 2020, that is extremely specific. It's going to be very easy for me to tell, you know, if it's October 2nd, I'm going to be able to say, yes, I've achieved my goal or no, I have not achieved my goal. Whereas the first one, I want to get better at math on October 2nd, I could be like, well, kind of like I've learned some few things about math. So I guess I've gotten better at math, but maybe I'm not as good as I want to be. I still want to get better. Um, so specific is the first thing we're talking about when we're talking about SMART goals. The M stands for measurable. So that goes back to um, what I was just saying about how um, with the second goal here, on October 2nd, I would be able to say to myself whether or not I achieve my goal. I'm able to measure, I'm able to determine whether or not I've achieved my goal. So measurable um, means how will you be able to tell if you've met your goal or not? The A stands for achievable. So you might see this listed as achievable or attainable. Um, and what it means is that it is achievable for you. Um, it's something that you can realistically work towards. It's not something kind of high in the sky dream that um, is unlikely that you're going to make happen. So for example, I could say that my goal is to be a millionaire by next week and you know technically that's possible it is possible however it's not very achievable um, likely if I set that as my goal I'm gonna get overwhelmed and discouraged and I'm not gonna feel very motivated to work towards it so achievable doesn't necessarily mean easy you can set yourself goals that are challenging um, but they should be connected to um, where you're at now in your life and what you think is realistic for you. So challenging and also realistic and related to you and your life. So kind of connected to that is R. R stands for relevant. So goals are more... It's more likely that we will achieve our goals if they are um, relevant to us, if they're connected to our values and our hopes and our dreams. So I could set myself the goal of, I want to be a millionaire by next week. However, for me personally, um, I'm, not, I'm not a super ambitious person. Like attaining lots of wealth and power is not incredibly important to me. I want to have enough money to take care of myself and my loved ones, um, but having tons of money beyond that is just not very important to me. So that goal, um, even though it might sound like kind of exciting and flashy, for me it wouldn't actually be that relevant. It's not very connected to my personal um, hopes and dreams. So R stands for relevant. It should be connected to your personal values, um, your personal hopes and dreams for yourself. And then T is time bound. Um, and this also goes back to being specific and measurable. So um, I know that many of you have the goal of wanting to achieve your GED. Um, but if you just leave it at that, if you say my goal is to get my GED, that could be next week or that could be 20 years from now. If you don't set yourself a deadline, you don't really have anything that you're working towards. Um, so one of the first things that I like to do with, with, with students who are um, maybe having trouble staying on track or having trouble feeling motivated to work towards um, finishing their GED is setting a specific date. Um, there doesn't have to be anything particularly special about that date. You could just pick a date. Um, and that's what I did with this second goal on the screen here. There was no, nothing special about October 1st, 2020. I was just like, well, okay, that sounds reasonable. It gives you a few months to work towards your goal, get some good studying time in. Um, so picking a date 
um, making your goal time bound is incredibly important. So you could say, I want to earn my GED by the end of 2020. So by December 31st, 2020, or I want to earn my GED by the time I turn 38, right? So whenever your next birthday is, or um, maybe you need to earn your GED really fast because you um, are really hoping to start a new job um, and gain, make some financial gains in your life. So maybe you're like, I need to get my GED by the end of July. That could be your goal. Um, so whatever the time frame is, being very specific about the time, making your goal time bound um, will make it a lot easier for you to feel like you're working towards something, feel like you have a deadline. Okay, so to wrap up my overall goal suggestions here, I just have a few things that I want you to keep in mind. Um, after I go through these, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through me setting a goal for myself, um, just to give you an idea of what this smart goal creation actually looks like in real life. Okay, so just some general goal suggestions. Um, I said you should write your goals down. You should have one place where you write down your goals and keep track of them. Um, this could be your phone. You could have like a personal notebook or a journal, or you might have like a little dry erase board like up on your refrigerator or something like that. Just some place where you're keeping track of your goals. Um, for myself, I have just like a little notebook where I um, write little to-do lists and I also just kind of keep track of things that are going on in my life. Um, I write down my goals and then I have different places where I keep track of different goals. So um, for my school, my own personal schoolwork, my research that I'm working on, I have a notebook where I put all of that stuff. I'll talk a little bit about that more um, in a minute. Um, for my um, physical goals. So right now I'm, I'm working on some running goals. I like to run. This is something that I do. Um, I have a spreadsheet that I keep on my computer where I keep track of that. And I know where all those things are. Um, and I know that um, that's where I go to when I want to keep track of those goals. My second major suggestion is don't work on too many goals at once. Um, human beings are just not able to keep track of that many things at once. You can't like hold that many priorities in your head. Um, and there's also only so much time in the day. So my suggestion would be to pick between one and five things you wanna make a priority and focus on those. And I would say less is more. So it's better to pick like one or two goals than it is to be like, oh, I'm gonna do all seven of these things. I'm gonna get them all done within the next week. Right. You're gonna go easy on yourself. Just pick one or two things that you're going to make a priority. And then connected to that is my third suggestion is to meet yourself where you are. So that means to start small and build up slowly. If your goal is to finish your GED by the end of this month, um, and you decide like, okay, to make that happen, I'm going to study for two hours a day every day. Let's say that that's what you decide. If you're currently studying zero hours a day, that is a huge change that you're making in your life. It's a very drastic change, and it's unlikely that you're going to be able to stick with that huge change for a whole month. So instead of like totally jumping in two hours a day every single day, you might start small and be like, I'm going to study for 15 minutes today, and I'm going to do that for a whole week where I promise to myself that I'm gonna study for 15 minutes every single day. And then if that first week goes well and you get those 15 minutes in every day, the next week you could be like, okay, I'm gonna study half an hour every day. And then you could go to 45 minutes and then an hour. So you wanna start small and build up slowly. It's gonna make it easier to stick with your goals. And then lastly, be kind to yourselves. <laughs> um, it's easy to be hard on yourself, especially when you're working towards a challenging goal. Uh, we all have days where you know, we don't do what we say we're gonna do. Sometimes you have weeks or months or years where that happens. Um, so just be kind to yourself and always realize that you, know, you can start small, you can build up slowly. There's gonna be um, days where you make it happen and days where you don't make it happen. 
Okay, and then finally, um, I just have a couple of sources here. So Khan Academy, they have a video all about SMART goals. Um, so that's a video that you can check out if you'd like just a little more discussion about this idea. Um, and then I also wanted to provide a source for this information. So there is a lot of academic research that's been done on goal setting and what makes um, goals effective and more likely for people to achieve. Um, and this paper here is just one of many, many studies um, that demonstrate the usefulness of this SMART goal idea. So if you're interested in a little more detail about um, where the idea of SMART goals comes from, this is something you can check out. You can ask me about it if you'd like some more info on that. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is, you can stick around and we are going to um, take a look at me setting my own goal. So we're gonna spend a few minutes doing that together. So some of you might know that I have been working on finishing up my master's thesis at UK. So I'm a um, master's student in STEM education at the UK College of Education. And I've been working on finishing up that degree. Some of you um, have very kindly agreed to participate in my study. Um, my study is about um, students' self-efficacy and how it relates to their performance on math tests. So um, what I'm doing right now, I'm coming, I'm kind of coming to the end of that research where I've almost finished collecting all of the information that I need. Um, and I'm coming to the part where I'm gonna need to analyze the information. So I'm going to look at all of the data um, and I'm going to try and understand what it's telling me. Um, now, I do have a background in math and statistics, um, but it's been a while since I used this math and statistics that I'm gonna need. So what I need to do over the course of the next few weeks is I need to review and study um, some of this statistics that I'm going to need to use to analyze my data. So I'm gonna share my screen with you here and share this PDF. Okay, so this is the PDF that I linked to the post in, the, in our Google Classroom. Um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I would fill this out. Now, usually if I was setting a goal for myself relating to my thesis, like I said, I would um, write it out in that notebook that I keep, it's just a red notebook that I have where I keep everything related to my thesis or this research project that I'm doing. Um, but I'm gonna do, fill out this worksheet just so that you have an idea of how you might use it if you're interested. Um, so this worksheet starts off with, um, just goes over um, what a SMART goal is. So these are questions that you can ask yourself about the goal that you've set um, to see if it really is a SMART goal. Okay, now we're gonna start filling this out. So today's date, today is July 8th, 2020 date by which I plan to achieve my goal. So for the specific goal that I'm gonna be talking about here, um, the date by which I plan to achieve it is the 16th. So that's actually next week, next Thursday. And now, like I said, this goal relates to me finishing my thesis, finishing my research project and finishing my master's. However, finishing my degree is a very big goal. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break it down into smaller goals that I can focus on one at a time so that I don't get overwhelmed and so that I make sure I'm doing the specific things I need to do to get my degree finished. So for this goal, um, I'm going to do kind of a very short summary of what it is. My goal is to review the statistics I will need to use to analyze my data. I'm going to review the statistics I'll, statistics I'll need to use to analyze my data. That's the bottom line. The benefits of achieving this goal will be I will be able to understand my data and I'll 
write the analysis chapter of my thesis. Now, after I do this review, it's not like I'm magically going to know everything that I'll need to know. So another benefit is that I will know enough to be able to ask the right questions because I'm not going to be able to do this all by myself. I'm going to have some people helping me um, get a handle on my data, but I want to do a review of the basics so that I have an idea of what's going on and so that I can ask intelligent questions. Okay, so verify that your goal is smart. What exactly will you accomplish? Well, specifically for this, what I am going to accomplish is I'm going to work through this little book. This is a textbook that I used in an introductory statistic course that I took um, within the College of Education um, for grad students doing education research. Um, and so I want to, I want to review this entire book. That's my goal. So I will review the, I'm going to call it the Lewis Beck book because that's the author. I will review the Lewis Beck book by 7, 16, 20. And the reason I chose that date is um, next week I'm going to be going out of town for like a long weekend, a little short little vacation. And so I'd like to be done with it before I leave so that I'll have this like nice step accomplish before I move on to the next step when I get back into town. Okay, measurable. How will you and others know when you've reached your goal? Um, I will have read, taken on, completed practice problems in all three chapters in the book. I will be able to state the basic principles of regression. So regression is um, the specific like statistics or math topic that I'm going to be reviewing in this book. You can see it's called applied regression. Um, so that's that's my goal is to go through this whole book. Um, I want to work through all the practice problems, and by the end, I should be able to, you know, describe what I've learned, learned state the basic principles of um, regression. Okay, attainable. Is attaining this goal realistic with effort and commitment? Do you have the resources to achieve this goal? If not, how will you get them? So this goal is realistic with effort and commitment, so it's not going to be easy because um, it's not a ton of time, but it is realistic. So I'm going to give you some reasons why I think this is realistic. So this is a short book, only three chapters. So it's not like a big honking 600 page textbook. It's just this little like booklet that has three chapters. This is a short book, only three chapters. Um, I've studied this before. So um, it's a review. I'm not really learning new stuff that I've never seen before. Like when I read through it, I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember learning that before. Um, do I have the resources? Um, I have the resources, so I have the book. Um, I can also use the internet to look up any extra info or explanation that I might need. Ask my boyfriend. So my boyfriend is getting his PhD in statistics, and so he will also be there um, to help me out if I have any specific questions. Why is this goal important to you? Hone in on why it matters. So this is the um, R in SMART goal, right? So relevant. So this goal will help finish my master's degree. And finishing my master's degree this year is really important to me. Um, it's something that I started a few years ago, and to be honest, I've been uh, procrastinating on it. Procrastination is a, a big problem that I have. 
Um, but I've, I've set myself the goal that I want to finish it this year. Um, I want to finish it to show myself that I'm able to finish it. Um, I also know that my family um, will be really proud of me. And I also know that having this degree um, will help me in my career as an educator. So this is a, you know, working through this book is just one small goal within the larger goal of finishing my degree that's really personally important to me. Time bound, when will you achieve this goal? I'll achieve it by next Thursday before I leave on my little trip. Okay, so now we have the action plan. So what specific steps must you take to achieve your goal? This action plan may just be just get you started. Feel free to create a more detailed step-by-step -step plan. So the goal is to start thinking about this, your like to-do list. Now that you have this goal, what is your actual to-do list? Because I can say all day long, oh, I want to finish this book, but it's not going to happen unless I like do some things to get me to the end of this book. So um, my task is to get through this whole book. And like I said, I, I um, took a look through this book at the table of contents to remind myself of what's covered in here and how many chapters it has. So it has three chapters. So um, what I wanna do is I want to break this up by chapter. Um, and I've estimated, I think each chapter will take me two hours. The third one might take me three hours just because it's a little bit longer. Um, but I'm gonna give myself about two hours to work on each chapter. So my first thing to do is to review chapter one. And I'm gonna estimate that that's gonna take about two hours. When I'm making myself a to-do list, I like to include an estimation of how long I think each task will take. Um, I think that helps me plan out my day a little bit more effectively. It also helps me be realistic about what I can accomplish with my day. So if I have this two hours of um, work to do in this book, that means tomorrow I need to find two hours to sit down and work on it, or Friday I need to find two hours to sit down and work on it. So my expected completion date, I would like to be done with this first chapter by Friday. So that is 7, 10. Okay, and then my second step is to review chapter two. And again, I'm gonna estimate that's gonna take me about two hours just because I've previewed the book a little bit. Um, I've taken a look at what's in there. It's about 20 pages long. And again, it's stuff I've seen before. So I think two hours is reasonable. And I wanna have that completed by Sunday. So that would be 7, 12, July 12th. Okay, and then my third step is to review chapter three. And I'm also, I think there's some notes at the end there. So I'm gonna take a look at the notes portion of the book and chapter three is a little longer and more involved. So I'm gonna give myself three hours to work on that. And I want to have that done. So I said my completion date was 716. I'm going to set myself the goal of having chapter three done by Wednesday. Um, and that gives me a little wiggle room. Like if I don't quite finish, I can finish up Thursday morning before I leave. So 7, 15, 20. And then I'm going to give myself a fourth step. So the fourth step is going to be to make a list of other topics for review. Um, so regression isn't the only statistical tool that I'm going to need to um, remind myself about in order to um, feel ready to do my data analysis. There's some. There's a few other. Um, tools and topics that I want to re-familiarize myself with. So before I leave for my trip next week, um, I'd like to sit down and make a list of those further topics and make a plan for when I'm going to look into them and also find resources, like find the websites or the textbooks that I'm going to use to help me review them. So that's going to be done by Thursday. 
Okay, and if you're still with me here, thank you for sticking with me. Um, we're gonna just do a couple more things here. So this worksheet actually has you um, do a couple more steps beyond just setting out your goal. And one thing it has you do is it has you reflect on any possible obstacles or challenges. Um, now this is, this is very important because recognizing things that could get in your way makes it easier for, your, for you to deal with them when they come up. So this is kind of like making a plan for what you're gonna do when difficulties happen. So what obstacles stand in the way of you achieving your goal? So for me, an obstacle is procrastination slash lack of motivation. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not very excited about this, but it's something I need to do in order to um, achieve my goal of finishing my degree. Um, so an obstacle that I have is gonna be procrastination, right? Because there's always more exciting things that um, I can find to do besides reviewing an old statistics textbook. So how will I address this challenge? What I will do um, is I will break my study sessions up into short chunks. And this is something I'm gonna talk about more in our study skills video for next week on um, study sessions. Uh, but I will break my study sessions into small chunks. And I will also reward myself with fun stuff after study session. So if I really don't want to do my studying um, and I'd much rather do some like sewing or something, if I'm working on like a sewing project and I'll say, okay, Morgan, you're going to do 20 minutes of studying. And if you do that, then you can um, take a break and do some sewing afterwards. Okay, so I, I really think for me, that's my main obstacle. Um, I don't think I have any other huge obstacles that are gonna get in the way. I think I, I should have plenty of time to get things done. There's really no reason I wouldn't have enough time. So it's really just that whole procrastination monster. It's always lurking. Okay, network of support and accountability when working towards achieving a goal, it's helpful to have one or two people whom you agree to check in with on a regular basis. Keeping others informed on your progress can be a useful external motivator. So um, that is other people keeping you accountable for yourself. So um, since this is a pretty small and short-term goal, um, you know, I'm hoping to have it done within a week. Um, I am, well, I'm telling you all about it, so I guess I'm sharing it with rather a lot of people. Um, but besides you, I'm also going to um, share it with uh, my boyfriend, um, and he will keep me accountable on it. I'll let him know, like, this is the thing I want to have done before we leave on our trip. So um, I'm not going to fill this out here, but he's someone that I'm going to be um, talking with about this as I work on it, and he will keep me accountable frequency of updates on progress. We're probably going to talk about it every day or every other day. And then agreed upon method of communication. It's going to be face to face because we see each other all the time. Okay. And then when I finish my goal, I can write down when my goal is achieved, give myself a little pat on the back and um, move on to the next step. All right, guys, so this was just an example of me working through um, a personal goal of mine um, and turning it into a SMART goal. I hope you found that useful, and if you ever want any help with setting your own um, SMART goals, just uh, hit me up, and I will do my best to help you out. I hope you're all having a great week, and I will talk to you again very soon.